What does one say to an ancient Nephilim ghost? I suppose you start with... I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy and we're back with another video. Diablo 4 beta starts tomorrow. Hope you're all excited. Obviously a few of us did pre-order the game or got access codes and we have been blasting it last weekend. So much fun. Really cannot wait for you guys to get your hands on it. Today we're going to talk about just five simple tips from my experience playing the beta for about 30 hours last weekend and I kind of wish I'd known some of these. Been very helpful. Before we do get going though guys, as always, thumbs up brightens my day. Subscribe if you're interested in Diablo 4. Can't wait to start blasting the Necro and the Druid this weekend and also testing out a few more things in the world of Sanctuary. Miss the beta tremendously. Right, let's get going. Tip number one, in terms of the game downloading it, you can pre-download it now. It is a rather large 80 gig. What you can do on the downloads is you can turn off and modify download so that you turn off the high res texture pack that will save you about 40 gig so it'll cut the download time in half not everybody's blessed with great internet so that will be a big thing another point in terms of the download in the game you want to install it if you have access to a solid state drive you want to put it on your ssd simply because otherwise you're going to get a load of lag when you load into each particular zone and tile set so the game is open world you can walk from one side to the other but each kind of zone is in like a tile set the computer has to load it in if it's not on an ssd it's just going to be really slow i struggled with this quite a lot the high res textures you can turn those off in the game even if you do have them installed you will get better performance tip number two you can actually give yourself an xp bonus for the entirety of the beta i presume this will carry over into live how you do this is you go and you craft yourself an elixir so parts of the game involves collecting consumables, so like berries, farming, this kind of stuff, plants basically. You click on them, kind of like Lost Ark, you then take them and you go to the particular vendor in town who makes the elixirs. They all have a separate benefit, so some of them might give cold resistance, some of them might give poison resistance, some of them might give attack speed, but most of them, in fact I think all of them come with a 5% XP bonus. It's not massive. That's what she said. <laughs> but it will help you either get to level 25 that little bit faster, or if you really want to try out a few different classes, again, that 5% XP may as well grab it. The XP bonus lasts for 30 minutes. I don't think it qualifies for 30 minutes of game time. So if you pop it, you play for five minutes, and then you go and take a 25 minute break. When you come back, your XP buff will have run out. Another side tip on the vendor. That does the elixirs is the world boss Ashava. If you do get hit by the gigantic sweep attack, it deals mega poison damage. So getting a poison resist elixir is going to be very helpful for you. At tip number three, this is the map. I'm going to show you screen with the map. When you start off the game, the map is completely shrouded. You don't know where anything is. This actually is quite a good system. I actually quite like it. I enjoy exploring it. It does carry over into the next character. So even if you've explored the whole map on your first character, you do your second, the map is shrouded again. With that said, it is very important to know the location of all the waypoints because the map doesn't really reveal itself with kind of any real radius. So as in your, you could be right next to a waypoint until you go up and grab it and click on it. You might not even see it on your mini map. It is, it's easy to miss them, I think is what I'm saying. So here's the map, you can have a little look at it. Waypoints, head to those, you get renown for activating all of them. Some of them you do have to liberate with strongholds, uh, which we will get onto in a, another tip in a sec. But ultimately, the map, if you can know your way around this, it's going to be helpful simply because, again, you can get stuck because whilst it's open world, you can't just walk across from one side to the other. There are like kind of channels, pathways, and each tile set has only got like three or four different entrances and exits. So that's the map. Arm yourself with the knowledge, you'll find it easier. Okay, tip number four is gonna be Stronghold. So again, similar to the map, there are three of these. This is definitely the most fun thing in the game, in my opinion. This is like a staged battle where you have to go in, you have to fight off a number of enemies, do a number of objectives, and then you liberate the town. You get big renown for it, which will help you across your other characters, because renown gives you access to skill points, gold, potion slots, all that kind of good stuff. 
I would do the ice one in the middle. Uh, last, I would. That is definitely the hardest one, unless you've got some super OP build or super OP gear. I have done guard on Hydra and Barb, both of whom can do it pretty easily. Um, but if you don't have access to decent stuff, I would do that one last, simply because the end monster is pretty difficult. Okay, tip number five. We're going back to the vendors here. We've got two kind of tips for this. Use the vendors as much as you can during the base out. So the two main important ones, I think, are going to be the Orb Gambler. Get these orbs as you complete various tasks in the game. So you can find them in caches for doing the orange kind of bounty events. You can get them from dungeons. You can find them in chests. Lots of different ways to get them. If you're going to do only one character or one or two characters, I just spend them when you get them. Try and get those legendary items. Just roll. It's about one in three chance it looks for like a legendary. Um, I tended to save mine until my character was like at least kind of like level 10 to 15 range because the item progression as you go through your items do become less and less valuable so level 25 items are much more powerful than level 15 as it kind of goes in Diablo games but if you do spend them you can get some pretty good stuff this then lends us into the next vendor which is the occultist the way the game works is the legendary powers on the items can actually be taken off and transferred onto a rare item or a different legendary item. If you find a really nice item at level 10 that does something really cool for your build that you want, you then find a much better item. You can go to the occultist, you can kind of extract the power, you then have it in your inventory, you can then plop it onto another piece. You can also get these powers to imprint on pieces by clearing dungeons. Each dungeon the first time it, you clear it will give you a specific reward. You can highlight over it on the map and it will tell you what it is. So you can actually target farm a particular dungeon if you want a power to imprint onto an item. And that way you can kind of manage your build. Now every item can't go on every slot so some powers are restricted to only jewellery or some powers can't go on weapons or whatever it is. You know, it's a, it's a fairly deep and intricate system I think once we do get going but it is quite powerful. Once you find a couple of nice powers to extract and put on something else, uh, it is worthwhile doing. There, of course, are other vendors. You can do gems, you can do buying of items, you can sell, you can salvage, all that stuff. But yeah, just don't sleep on the, particularly the orbs, particularly the bultist. Those two things are pretty good. And I don't think I use them uh, quite enough to base them. They're my five tips. They are fast, quick, and dirty, uh, filthy casual tips. I haven't covered some of the exploits in the game, such as the ability to cast things off screen, the ability to get level 35 weapons equipped at level 5, and also I haven't talked about how to uh, repeatedly farm the world boss and stuff like that, because I don't think that's how the game's intended to be played. I don't think it does anybody any favours to use these exploits. I hope Blizzard has fixed all of those things for this next beta. Uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm excited for it. Hope you're excited. Hope these tips were useful. I've been Filthy Casual. Take it easy. Peace.